Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's just begin to worship him. I sing praises. I sing praises to your name. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Praises to your name. Most high. Together, let's sing it together. I sing praise. I sing praises to your name. Oh God. Oh Lord. Praises. Praises to your name. Most high. Most high. For your name is great. And great to be praised. Lift your hands and sing. Just honor God tonight. We love you, Jesus. We just lift your hands and tell the Lord, thank you tonight. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your greatness. Thank you for your faithfulness. Somebody, wherever you are all over the world tonight, you should clap your hands with clapping, with, with thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. For your name is great and greatly to be praised. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The word of God declares, now thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph by our Lord Jesus. So we honor God tonight. This is just such a special moment. It is a prophetic moment and the Lord has spoken and he has taken amen, me into a time before him and has given me some instructions i want to call it because i do recognize that as we are moving and changing times and seasons praise god amen ignorant will we be if we don't know and understand what god is saying about those times and seasons 
So the Lord has taken this time. And of course tonight, praise God, is our night of prayer and intercession. So I want to invite all of you from all over the world, amen, to continue to pray tonight as the Lord have me to release this word. I know so many of you have prayer requests. We still want you to send them in tonight. Praise God. We still want you to, amen, send them into our prayer call centers. We do have operators that are in there. But I'm taking this moment as instructed by the Spirit of God to say to you, his, his, his children, his people, praise God, what he, has, what he is speaking, amen, concerning this season that we are coming into. And amen, this time and even beyond. So the word of the Lord is not just for 2022. The word of the Lord is for 2022 and beyond. Because I mean, everybody, God uses prophets differently. He speak, amen, to prophets differently. Some people, uh, prophets, he speak to in a vision, a dream of the night. Praise God. Some prophets he speak through, speak to, praise God, amen, with strong impressions. Some uh, he will give a visitation or maybe an angelic visitation. Praise God, an encounter that we will have with the supernatural realm. Praise God. But God chooses how he speaks. And then there are times he will even speak in an audible voice. Praise God. Amen. He said in the book of Jeremiah, I believe, call unto God, call unto me and I will show you, I will show you. Praise God, great and mighty things. And I believe tonight that God, as we are called, as we have called, and as we have spoke, uh, interceded, and have been asking God for all these days, well, Lord, what are you saying? What is your will? What is your word? What is your instruction to the bride, to the body of Christ? In this hour, now, the Lord is now revealing his secrets to his servants, the prophets. Isn't that amazing tonight? Somebody should just say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So God is amazing. Praise God. I mean, those of you that are in with me, you may be seated, but those of you that are at home, praise God, I want you to take out your listening air tonight, your listening air, your communicating device. Praise God. Some of you will be able to put into the chat group Praise God. Amen. What the Lord is saying. And even our team that's here may drop notes in the chat group. Because this is going to be that important of a word. That everyone, every eyes, every air. Praise God. He said every eye shall behold him. Well then every air must hear what the spirit of God is saying to you and to the church. I want you to be poised and ready to hear this tonight amen so to God be the glory and we just want to go straight into this in Amos chapter 3 and verse number 6 and 7 the Lord begins to speak to this prophet by the name of Amos and he begins to dictate to him these words he said in Amos 3 and 6 he says shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid shall there be evil in a city and the Lord has not done it. Surely the Lord God will do nothing but reveal it his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. And now this is God giving a word to, to, the, to the world, to the nations. And he's saying now, if something happens in the earth, if something happens, God, Elohim, the creator of the entire universe, if something happens in the earth, is God not going to be aware as to what has happened? Yes, he will. But what is he doing first and foremost? He reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. So the revealing, amen, the revealing prophecy is the revealing of the secrets of God. Prophecy is what? The revealing of the secrets of God. Is anyone hearing me tonight? It is the revealing of the secrets of God. It is God, praise God, opening, amen, amen, a corridor in the realm of the spirit and allowing, praise God, his servants. But he said, I will not do anything in the earth except I reveal it. Reveal it. This is the King James Version. 
Reveal it means that God does not just give you one revelation. That's right. He will give you line upon line, precept upon precept. And God will keep speaking until there is what is called a spiritual understanding. Are we agreeing tonight? Yes, ma'am. So the things of God are mysteries. The things of God are locked and sealed sometimes in um, in the spirit realm, amen, in the heavenly realm. And it's 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 for us as people to unlock and to unveil where those things are hidden. Praise God. Amen. Are you still with me? Praise God. So it's important that it's very important that we in that place where we can now he asked the people one time, they said, Why is how is it that you speak to the people in these parables yes. and yet you speak to the disciples in a different way? Yes, ma'am. And he said, How be it that it is now my desire that you understand the mysteries is given to you to know the mysteries. So God sometimes will speak to his prophets, yes. his apostles, praise God, amen, so that they will know the mysteries yes. of what God is saying and what God is doing in this hour. Yes, ma'am. Hallelujah. And so God wants us to be in a spiritual position where we are understanding, yes. where we are unveiling. Yes, ma'am. Praise God, where we are unveiling and we are being able to, uh, to, 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 to come into yes. a understanding yes, of what he is saying yes, and the things that he is trying to get us to see. Yes, ma'am. So earlier today, I was speaking to a group of my sons and daughters and then I began to show them something that the Lord showed me in my time before the Lord and what I saw coming before me was the the, the, the apparatus that the um, the optrician or the uh, ophthalmologist or the optometrist that's it the optometrist would use and I saw it's like when you go into the optometrist's office they will sit you in a chair and then they will put before you different lenses. Am I correct? Come on. So the lenses they will put in front of you. And then they will begin to put something on the screen. Letters on the screen. And a light will shine. They'll project those letters onto the screen. And then they will ask you, what do you see? Yes. Is this correct? correct? And then you will see as you as you begin to say what you see they will then change the lenses and they will say is it better in your right eye or in your left eye uh, am i correct yes. and then they will say then they will change the letters and the letters will look sometimes as if they get smaller and smaller right. and smaller what is the optometrist doing the optometrist is seeing where your vision is at He's not necessarily looking for bad vision. He's really trying to see how good your vision is. Oh my God, I wish somebody got it tonight. He's really trying to see how good your vision is. But in the process of discovering how good it is, he has to also discover what? How bad your vision is. So this is now what God is saying. I want to see where your vision is at. I want to know if you have understanding of where this year is going, where it's taking you, and then where are you going to fit in it. Somebody clap your hands and give God a praise. So it's so important to know what the Spirit of God is saying and the plans that God have ahead for us, praise God, in this new season. Now it's so good to know what God's plans are. But what plans also does the enemy have? The word of God said in 2 Corinthians 2, do not be ignorant of Satan's devices. So it's going to be very, very important to the believing bride, to the Christian, to the blood wash, to the child of God, to know what the Spirit of God is saying, but to also be aware. And so I want to speak right now Praise God, what the Lord has spoken to me. Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. 
and this is the word of the Lord that he has given to me and as I said earlier there are many prophets there are many voices there are many people that are speaking and many everyone may sound as though well if this person have said God has said this and this person have said God has said that what is God saying do not be moved because as I said earlier amen God speaks to different prophets in different ways amen what is more important for you is that the word the prophets are speaking is somewhere in alignment with the word of God and that word of prophecy at the end of the day should be revealing Jesus Christ whether it's secrets or mysteries it should still be revealing the Christ that is the purpose of prophecy from Genesis to Revelation and so prophecy is not for self-promotion it is not to say that I told you so but it is just so that as I told you out of Amos chapter 3 just so that God will reveal his secrets and even if something happens in the earth you would have already known because God has already revealed it to his servants the prophet prophets the Lord said these words to me in a time of an encounter and I'm not sure if it was in as much a vision as it was I can say it was an encounter because I was awakened out of my sleep and I would normally go before the Lord in the three o'clock watch of the night and so this was nothing uh, surprising to me to be wakened out of my sleep praise God but as I woke out of my sleep I knew that I was awake but it felt as though I was still in a sleep I should say so it was like I was having a vision within a vision but I knew that I the person had woken up and as I woke out of sleep I felt as if I woke out of sleep into a vision and I felt the presence as though there was somebody else in the room well I am accustomed to as I said being before the Lord at this particular hour of the night so I'm very much aware that the Spirit of the Lord will sometimes come to visit me but this visitation was a little bit different from any visitation I had had before because the Lord was speaking to me in such a way and as he was speaking he was showing me I would say visions and side clips of some of the things that he was showing to me that he was saying to me one of the things he started out by saying was 2022 was not going to be an easy year it will prove to be a treacherous year and a time of great hardship and spiritual warfare this is the first things he said he said this will be a year or a year that the sons of Issachar will have to rise from the desert place and from the wilderness and in the Word of God he talks about Kadesh but in this time of visitation I heard words like Kadesh and I also heard words like Kadar I don't know what that Kadar means but he said they will have to come from the wilderness place and they would have to ascend and come to the forefront the Bible speaks of Issachar as one of the sons of the one of the tribe of Israel one of the tribes of, of sons of Jacob and how this small tribe and group of men of God were given to know the signs were given the gift and the ability to discern the seasons and the times of God and the Bible said Israel will not go to battle except they had consulted with the sons of Issachar that is a current anointing represents the anointing I believe of these end time prophets that God is going to raise up in the church and in the body of Christ to proclaim the word of the Lord thus said the Lord to the people and so you will see this happening all over the earth from some places that you did not imagine God will raise them from 
young and old, male and female. There will be no barrier of gender difference. God will raise his prophets. Then the Lord said unto me, he said that nothing, absolutely nothing will be accomplished in this new season by your own might nor by your own strength your own power or your own carnal ability but he said but rather everything that will be accomplished in this new season will only be accomplished by the spirit says the Lord of hosts the Lord is now saying I am going to do some mighty things in this new season and he said the only way you as the child of God you as the believer you as the Christian is going to overcome it will not be by your own might it will not be by your own power your own strength it will only be by the spirit of the mightiest God that is very key the Lord echoed that throughout the entire night and he kept repeating those words out of the book of Zechariah I believe it is for but now he says the only way you will be able to endure or overcome the trials of 2022 and beyond amen he said is what because why because by man's ingenuities amen man's way of thinking and trying to engineer and fix problems is not going to stand in the face nor in the knowledge of the most high God man's ingenuities man's way of fixing problems man's way of solving problems it will not stand in this new season in the face in the knowledge of the most high God he said this is the way the Lord said it to me. He said, tell the people, as we go into this new time and season, this will be a time and a season of great shaking, of great shaking. Great shaking, says the Lord, and great rumbling. Great shaking and great rumbling. And then he said to me, for the world as it is will go through like a ship in the midst of a big storm the world as we know it will go through like a ship in the midst of a big storm and he said you will know this because why the waves and the billows the waves and the billows of whale waves and turmoils okay and treacherous seas will beat and shake the ship to the core I want to repeat what he said to me he said this time that we're going into and the seasons that we're entering will be a time and a season of great shaking and a rumbling and when he said this word rumbling to me I saw as it were in the realm of the spirit the world was like a ship a big ship in the midst of a big storm with waves and billows of waves turmoils and treacherous seas beating and shaking the ship to the very core the adversities the Lord said of life will seek to cause many to crumble and the desire will be so strong or horrendous to want to give up these are some of the things that the Lord said to me and then with a loud voice like thunder I heard the voice of the Lord said tell the people do not give up do not give in do not give up and do not give in says God he says tell the people the solution and the answers 
to the vexing atrocities in this new season will only be resolved by absolutely uh, trusting the po power of the spirit of the living God. I want to repeat that because I want some people to hear exactly what God is saying to you. He said, the winds, the world will become like a ship in the midst of a big storm. And he said, the waves and the billows will become tumultuous, tur turmoils, treacherous, treacherous seas that will beat and shake it almost to the core. And then the Lord said with a loud voice, he says, tell the people, do not give up. Do not give up, says the Lord. He said the solution and the answers to the vexing atrocities of that new season, of the new time we're entering and that I've entered, will only be resolved absolutely by trusting the power of the Spirit of the living God. And then the Spirit of the Lord went on to say to me, he said, the test, the trials, and the tribulations of the new era will come to shake and break the courage of many. He says, the undaunting task of figuring out ways to survive and overcome will rest solely on the shoulders of your faith in the Almighty God. The undaunting task of figuring out ways to survive, ways to overcome, will rest solely on the shoulders of your faith in the Almighty God. It will not rest on the shoulders or the faith of your neighbors, of your family, of your friends. It will rest where? Solely on the shoulders of your faith in the Almighty God. God said to me, it will take great faith. It will take what type of faith? Great faith. Great faith. And an unbelievable mixture of boldness with much courage to pull through what may be perceived as one of the most trying times. It will take what? He said it will take a mixture, it will take great faith. And an unbelievable mixture of boldness with much courage to be able to pull through what may be perceived as one of the most trying times. The persecution of those trying times is going to take a, is going to, the, the, the persecution to those, okay, in these trying times is going to amen try to take out even those of you that are trying to make a righteous stand for God and so it's going to become arduous but the Bible said the blessed hope and then the Lord said to me the blessed hope for those of you that are trying to take a righteous stand will rest in you confidently knowing God's word and the fact that he never fails are you hearing the Lord tonight 2022 will be the year that will be known for fasting and prayer. When you would have come out of this year, it would have been marked by the fact that you fasted and you prayed. Those believers that will stand, those that will overcome, those that will live victorious, those that will have miracles in their lives, will say that they have achieved these miracles because they know that they fasted and prayed. And then the Lord said to me, everyone, 
and every family will be responsible for constructing their personal prayer altar. He said the church is going to have to make prayer its number one priority. Every family will be responsible for constructing their personal prayer altar. And then he said the church is going to have to make prayer its number one priority. The Lord said, he said there will be a demand for increased evangelism, increased evangelism, increased outreach programs. He said there's going to be what a demand for it. In other words, you will not be considered even a church if you have not devised yet a plan or a strategy to reach out to the lost and to reach out to those who are in this dying world. So he says, it is time now for everyone to begin to focus your mind and your faith and your effort on a strategy or strategies on how we will reach this world. God says, you that are standing again for righteousness and holiness and truth, you will not be defeated. He said, you will not what? You will not be what? Defeated, says God. He says, you will only be victorious. The Lord said to me, he said, I will supernaturally intervene, amen, on your behalf and I will cause my glory to be revealed to my prepared bride. To my prepared bride. I heard the words ringing in my ears like a chiming bell like chiming bells would be ringing I heard these words ringing in my ears and I heard as it were like chiming bells ringing and the bells that I heard ringing were as to announce like the sound of the entrance of somebody great like you will hear trumpets but it was like I remember growing up in the old days and you will hear on the islands where there will ring a bell to announce it's time now daybreak has broken then they will ring another bell to announce it's 11 a.m. it's time for church then they will ring a bell in the evening to say it's time for Sunday school anybody remembers that but the Lord spoke to me and I heard like great bells that were ringing and the bells were ringing to announce the sound of a new era and a time and even a new dispensation. And then I heard as though the speaking voice that was in the room was like that of an angel. So I heard this mighty voice shouting. I know the Spirit of the Lord was speaking to me, but then I heard like another voice now. And this voice was sounding like bells and trumpets. And it shouted loud, prepare, prepare, prepare. He said it three times. He said it three times. And then, he said it again, a second round, three times. Prepare, prepare, prepare. And he said, prepare yourselves for what is and what is to come. Prepare yourselves for what is and for what is to come. Learn, said the Lord, how to live by the dictates of heaven and not by the dictates of man. Prepare, prepare, prepare. Prepare, prepare, prepare. Learn how to live by the dictates of heaven and not the dictates of of man prepare yourselves for what is and what is to come 
And then the Lord said to me, he said, tell my people to begin living their life from heaven to earth. and not from earth to heaven. I want to repeat, he said, tell everyone to begin to live your life from heaven to earth and not just from earth to heaven. Live as if you are from heaven and you've been placed on earth to influence earth. Stop living as though you are the lesser when God has positioned you as we are seated in Christ in heavenly places. So where we are in God is from heaven to earth. So many people are busy living as if from earth to heaven. So this is why by the time we pass through a problem, you're ready to give up. You're discouraged. You're ready to turn back. You're ready to leave the church. You're ready. You feel frustrated and frustrated because you're seeing everything through the spectrum of the eyes of earth, through the eyes of man. You're not seeing it as God is seeing it. God is looking down at where you are. And then you're so busy after your problem has beat you up. Then you're trying to look up to God for help. But if you're living from heaven to earth, then you will begin to see every situation through the eyes of God and the way God sees it. So after the angel made that announcement and he blew as it were these bells and trumpets, Rang bells, blue trumpets, prepare, 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 prepare. Tell the people to, to prepare and to stop living your life from earth to heaven. Start living your life as if you are from heaven influencing earth. Because if not, you will, you will continue to fail. You will continue to fall. You will continue to feel weary. You will continue to feel despondent. And you may also feel a, a sense or a, a tendency to want to give up. So he said, don't live from earth to heaven. Live as though you are from the place or the realm called heaven. And you've been placed here to influence and impact the earth. The Lord said, for the time of the old corn is over. The day of the new wine has come. And he says, the new wine has come and no longer will the church be able uh, to use the old wine skins that you have been accustomed to using. The day of the old corn has ceased. The day of the new wine has come and no longer will the church of God be able to use the old wine skins to garner the oil or to harvest the, the wine, sorry. You will no longer be because why? It will require of you new wine skins for the new wine which I shall pour out, says the Lord. It shall pour out lavishly 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 upon my bride lavishly for my bride and if you're trying to use an old wine skins an old way old methodologies old systems old mindsets old parts all uh, uh, holding uh, reservoirs you will discover that they will become cracking and breaking, says the Lord. They will become what? Cracking and breaking. It will not hold itself. It will not be able to stand up. The ship in the midst of tumultuous seas, waves beating, breaking, 
it will not be able to hold. So the Lord said, I'm going to pour out what? Lavishly upon my bride. Amen. The new wine. And then he said, those who are prepared, prepared. Notice the word he kept repeating is prepare. The word is what? Prepare. Those who have prepared. Those who are prepared and avail themselves, says the Lord. He says, no more will it be business as usual. No more will it be what? Business as usual. You will no longer just be a halfway Christian, halfway getting by, church as usual. Amen. The same old yada da. No, God says it will no longer be possible for it to be business as usual. As we enter and the Spirit of the Lord begin to press even more and more by this time, I begin to feel weary. I begin to feel a sense of restlessness because I so badly, after such a long time, I felt as though I had been in that prophetic moment for hours and I wanted to sleep and rest so bad. My physical strength there was, was feeling that it needs to go and lie down or, or just go back into the sleep. And then the Lord, but it, at the same time, my spirit man was just being quickened and just desiring to, to, to know more of what he was showing to me and saying to me. So this is now the wrestling of the flesh and the spirit because we want to know what God is saying and what the Lord desires to do. But can the human, can the human stand in it? And then the Spirit of the Lord said to me, the powers of darkness will no longer hide themselves. They'll no longer hide themselves. They'll no longer hide themselves. They're going to become more and more evil. And he said to me, because why? There are spirits that have been released in this next season that is going to try to enter your life and hide. They're going to try to do what? Enter your life and get in and then hide. Wow. And it's going to look as if you are the one, you are the problem. You are, and you will not be able to discover what the problem is. All you're going to know, many people are going to feel as if, I don't know why, I just don't want to be a part of church no more. I don't know why, I just feel like I, I'm ready to give up. I don't know why. And this is because that there's a spirit, a demon spirit, so this is the time that we come into where the Spirit of God is revealing to deliver. So they're going to try to enter your life and hide as it were so that you will not know how to the deal with their evil powers. And um, I was talking about this little animal that he showed me that was called an armadillo. Okay, an armadillo. And I will speak about that spirit of the armadillo uh, in another time. But you know an armadillo is a little animal that looks like a rodent. And it has a hard casing on the outside. And when it's afraid, it goes, it plucked his head into the whole shell as a protective covering. This is how I saw this spirit entering the life of so many people. It enters their life, and then once it enters, <coughs> it hides itself in its shell. So you don't really know, uh, hey, what has attacked me? Where is this thing coming from? Why am I being bothered and irritated by something? God is saying, well, the hour that we're going to come in, there's the darkness will no longer be just able to hide itself. They will become more and more sinister. Watch what's going to happen in this new season. The world will celebrate wickedness and will seek to glory in all forms of deep-seated darkness. 
the world is going to celebrate wickedness and is going to what? Is going to how? Huh, is going to celebrate wickedness and is going to, to seek to, to become even more engrossed in deep seated darkness. So God is calling the bride now to rise from slothfulness and sluggishness. For God says, He says, the glory, He says, This is the time shall come where my glory shall be revealed. Then the Lord said to me, While there will be darkness, there will be light in Israel. Just as it was in the days of the, of the beginning, when there was darkness over Egypt. There was light over Goshen. God will cause light to be over his people. The Spirit of the Lord says that we must pray for the life of the unborn child. The unborn child. Especially those that are yet tender in the womb. Pray for the life of the, of the unborn child. Those that are yet tender in the womb. Because I saw an evil spirit wanting to smite the womb. And I just see people having like repeated miscarriages, repeated miscarriages, repeated miscarriages. Just trying to give birth to a baby would seem like a task that is unbelievable uh, warfare and hardship. So I saw many women coming under attacks of demons, smiting the womb. Can you imagine? Husbands and wives wanting to produce a child. Just one, if only one. But is going through horrific warfare just to conceive and carry to full term in an offspring. Yet on the flip side of it, you will see an emergence of abortion. Where people will rise and for no reason dare to take the life of an unborn child so this is a somewhat of a irony that the church the world will find itself in and the Lord says pray for the life of the unborn child pray for the life because many are crying in heaven because their time has been taken away from them and their purpose have not been fulfilled and then he said, pray for the life of little children and even orphans. Praise God. The Lord said, do what? Pray for the life of little children and orphans. And he said, invest in the livelihood of youth and children. Create and develop programs that will teach, amen, children, godly ways and spiritual engineering. And I asked him, what was spiritual engineering? And the Spirit of the Lord smiled and he said, it is the ways and the function of the Holy Spirit. In other words, he was saying to me, teach children the ways of the Spirit. The ways of what? The Spirit. The ways of the Spirit of God. Teach them that. Don't give them games. Don't give them, get them addicted to the things of this world that's going to stare their minds and their heart away from the spirit he said teach them spiritual engineering the ways of the kingdom then the Lord said invest in their livelihood create and develop programs that will teach them godly ways and then he said build infrastructure to protect the minds of little children and their spiritual well-being he said it will also become the ownership of parents to train their children. You don't give a child what they ask for. In this new season and this new era, give the child only what they need, not what they want. Give them what they need. The Lord said, he said, this is the time that we're going into. There will become a, a demand for a greater level and a display of power. He said, for as the world increases herself in worldly knowledge, 
He said, so must my people be increased with wisdom and knowledge, says the Lord of hosts. There will be a demand for the fresh oil. There will be a demand for the fresh oil. Just as he said about the new wine, there will be a demand for the fresh oil of my spirit. The Lord said that I should tell the body of Christ. He said, keep your lamps trimmed. Keep your lamps filled with oil and keep them trimmed. Check regularly your gauge or your gorge. Check to make sure that the Vic is working and that there is light or fire to ignite it. Do not be foolish as the fools were, but be wise, says the Lord God of hosts. Then the Lord took me in the realm of the spirit as it was above the earth. And I saw the Lord say to me, he says, look and look at the spirit of famine and look how it's taking over the land. And I said, how can this be? And I began to look at the different continents of the earth, seven continents. And he said, I began to look at the big super nations, it would seem. And the Lord said, look and see what's happening in the land. And I saw, as it were, in storehouses, stores, storefronts, shelves were dry and bare. And it seemed as if even the simplest uh, goods were no longer available on the shelves. And the Lord said to me, tell the people to begin to gather to themselves everything that is essential get to themselves things that are what called essentials because I saw the shelves were clean and I saw like a scarcity like scarcity roamed the land and the Lord said to tell the people to begin to consider different types of farming different types of farming different types of farming whatever that will be able to feed your family and to feed your community, your church. He says to come together in these ways to consider group farming, whether some people may be thinking about like cattle or maybe uh, vegetable farms, organic farms or fish farms. But I begin to see the Lord begin to put it in the hearts of people and people were coming together um, and they were combining their skills and gifts and effort to to create farms so that people can be fed. Many governments will be shaken. Some of them will even topple and fall. In particular, there are three such governments that will topple and fall as we enter this new season. And there will also be a government leader that will seek to take his own life. These are things that I've seen and the Lord has shown to me. And Afghanistan will be in the face of the news again. And also Syrians, the Syrians, they will seek to make war again. And the Lord said, remember this name. I heard it would, as it were, Afghanistan will be in the face of the news again. And then he said that the Syrians will seek to make war again. And then he said these names to me. Remember the name Croatia and Sunni. Remember the name Cro Croatia and Sunni. Okay, the Sunni government. And so we, we would know a little bit about Croatia back in the day. Um, in, in Croatia, I believe, under Christianity, the second la their second largest religion is Islam. Um, their largest religion is Christianity. But why is God saying to, to pray for Cro Croatia and pray for the Christians in Croatia? And Christianity seemed to be their largest um, religion. Islam is the second largest. But he said, pray for Croatia. 
And then he said something about the Sunni government. I don't understand that, but the Sunni is the largest sect of um, Muslims uh, in, in that in their region. In, in fact, I think in the world, if I'm not mistaken. But the Lord said, "Pray for the Christians in Croatia." Now he went on to continue speaking to me. And that was just something he said. These are many things that he spoke to me. I'm going to have to go on and dig and even myself want to find out what has God, why has God spoken some of these things. Then he said to me, some nations will become peace, but be aware of their dilemma. He said, there's a disaster for an example. Even as we would pray, we should pray for India. I think Dubai is in, in no, uh, Dubai okay is on that other side of it but pray for Dubai because I saw as it was like a, a portion of of that area like it sank and um, I don't know it's like the Lord said to me the West a Western region and you can remember these will be keywords in prophecy these will be keywords in prophecy keywords so as he showed them to me, as he gave them to me, I'm, this is exactly how I'm giving them to you. And there, I, I don't have any apologetics because I don't know anything about anything. I'm just speaking as God took the occasion to speak to me. So we should pray for Dubai and we should pray. This is such a, a, a prevalent place for wealth and prosperity. But it's like something is going to happen in the western region or district of this place that's going to cause a portion of it to sink. I don't know what it will be, if it will be a, a weather catastrophe or what it will be. But you will see that on the news, but everyone should still pray so that something maybe different will happen. And the Lord said... Pray, okay. I also heard Prince Armelli will be rescued. These are things that the Lord said to me in this journey as he was taking me. He also said we should pray for the president of America. Pray against uh, uh, sickness. Everybody already knows that, so that's nothing new. Amen. But pray that there is no fracture, no fracturing, no deterioration of his health. Um, you know, before the time of his, you know, his uh, reign in, in his office. But I saw as it was in the spirit, the need to pray for him in his presidency and to pray for his health. You know, for, uh, I, I prayed, the Lord had me as I began, to, as he was saying to me to pray, I prayed against things like hip fracture. I prayed against the deterioration of his health, pneumonia, things like that. And these are all things that the Lord was just showing me in the spirit realm, okay? Whether or not it's your president, whether or not you voted for this party or that party, God says, let prayers be lifted up for kings and, pray, uh, and, and leaders and governments and nations. So that's, that's that word. Then he said, the church will be tested beyond its curtains. The church will be tested beyond its curtains says the Lord, it must not buckle at the dictates of sinful man. God says, I will fight for my church, my true church. The gates of hell will not prevail against her, says the Lord of hosts. So he said, I will fight for my true church. The gates of hell will not prevail against her. He said, there will be a great demand, praise God, in times to come for the ministry of healing and deliverance. He said, you will see this. You will know of this as you enter this new era, this new year, this new season, this new time. There's going to be a great demand for the ministry of healing and the ministry of deliverance. Why? One of the things that's going to happen is the healthcare system as we know it is going to wobble and almost to the place of failing worldwide. And this is what, what we see. Then the Lord said to me, the world will then begin to persecute the church and to despise my true church. But the Lord said, do not be moved or disturbed. 
Do not waste your strength fighting the wrong battles. As he have said to you in recent times, he said people are fighting over um, whether or not you should vac or pro-vac or anti-vac and all of this while the fighting is going on about this. The scientists, scientists and politicians have already moved on to legalizing other aspects and components of their agenda and which you will come to know as the passport worldwide. And the Lord said, tell the people to save the, the, the zeal of their anointing. Save their anointing, save your anointing and your zeal for the greater good. Save your anointing and your zeal for the greater good. You will conquer and become more than conquerors, says the Lord, as you seek his face. In fact, he said these words to me very clearly. He says, when the world laughs and seeks to condemn my bride, there will come the greatest outpouring revival that the world has ever seen. In the midst of when the world, somebody should just tell the Lord, thank you right there. He says, when the world begins to laugh and mock and scoff my bride, there will come an outpouring of the greatest revival that the world has ever seen. I will cause a hunger and a stirring for my presence, says God, for my power and my glory. I shall interrupt the cycles and cause this to be the greatest level of supernatural glory this world have ever seen. And he said, it will be carried by miracles, signs, and wonders. Praise God, the preaching of the word, the teaching of the word, but the demonstration of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Lord said it shall come and it shall become what is going to be known as commonplace. In other words, it's not going to be few and far apart. It's going to become commonplace. And he says, yes, you will see my hands upon the young and the old. And I will cause there to be a stirring and the gifts, says the Lord, praise God, shall be seen in an unprecedented way. I will cause there to be a stirring and the gifts of my spirit to become visible, present, like never before. There will be an outbreak of revival in prisons, says the Lord. And, and he said on the streets, praise God, on the train, on the plane, everywhere, in schools, even in some obscure places says the Lord. Somebody can give the Lord a praise. Oh, Lift your voice and give him a praise. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So you will begin to see this revival. He said there's going to be what? A great outpouring. I will cause there to be a stirring and he said, the gifts of my spirit is going to be visibly present like you have never seen it before. There will be an outbreak of revival in my prisons, in the prisons, amen, of my presence, in the prisons, on the streets, praise God, in homes, in schools, and churches that have dared to take a righteous stand says the Lord. So he said, be not shaken, even though there will be a great shaking. And this will be a year where you will notice notably rumbling. You will see the earthquakes. You will see the floods. You will see the storms. You will see the tsunamis. You will see turmoil. You will see rioting in the streets. And you will see, praise God, many kingdoms being shaken God is saying to the church and to the righteous do not be shaken don't be moved to a degree or disturbed in your mind or within your being praise God by what you see happening around you says the Lord he says so secure your faith in him secure yourself in him be steadfast be unmovable he said, stay abiding and abounding in my work, says God, and do not let your labor be in vain. Not by might, nor by human abilities, 
or strength, says the Lord, but it will all be accomplished. Your victory, your breakthrough, your deliverance, your healing, your miracles. He said, all of this will be accomplished by the spirit of the mightiest God. Zechariah 4 and 6. Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. This is the word of the Lord that the Lord has spoken to me. And so many other volumes has he spoken. I already know that I cannot speak all that he has spoken to me in this one moment that has been allotted to us. But I do know, praise God, that times and seasons belong to the Lord. And so during the course of this week, of this month, and, and this year, and times to come, God, I believe, will continue to speak his word to his servants, the prophets. And then he said, he that have an heir, let him hear what the Spirit of God will say to the church. That heir is your heir. Take now the time to listen and to go back and to refresh yourself with some of the things that the Spirit of the mightiest God has spoken to you today. Position yourself and remember what the Spirit of the Lord said very early. He said, I heard bells ringing. And then I heard as it was a trumpet, but then I heard an angel shouting, prepare, prepare, prepare. And he said those three words, three times, two times, prepare, prepare, prepare. Prepare for what? Prepare yourself for the coming of the Lord. Prepare yourself because Jesus is coming again. He said, tell the people, prepare and to start living as though we're living from heaven to earth and not living from earth to heaven. Start living as though we are living from heaven to earth and not from earth to heaven. God wants the bride to be ready. The mindset of the church and the church that has not been preparing herself is why do we need to pray? Why do we need to even gather together? Why do we need to do this and why do we need to do that? It is the voice of the virgins that were called foolish. But those that were wise, the Bible said, they had their lambs, their lamps trimmed, filled with oil, and they even had extra oil in case the oil ran out. And the Bible said, when the trumpet blew and the sound was made, behold, the bridegroom cometh. Let's go out there and meet him. The Bible said those that were fools had no oil, and they went to try and buy or borrow oil. Well, that did not stop the bride from coming. The Bible said that the bridegroom came and took those that had their laps and that were dressed and ready to go. It is my prayer tonight, beloved, that even as you've heard this word from the Lord, and even as I have spoken it, I spoke it with much love, and I spoke it just as I heard it, not adding to, or seeking to take away from what the Lord had said to me. And my prayer is that even as we're preparing, he said what? Behold, I am coming quickly. In the book of 2 Timothy, he said, Men shall become more lovers of themselves, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God. And then he said in Haggai 2, I will shake the nations, and I will shake the desires of the nations. And he said what? The glory of the latter house shall be greater than that of the former house. So what is happening in this new time that we're going in? Things are going to be shaken. 
things are going to what? Be shaken. Things are going to be what? Shaken. And it's going to be shaken to a degree that it's going to feel as if it's rumbling and tumbling and turning over. But one thing for sure, if your faith is built and anchored in Jesus Christ, you will not be overcome. You will not be destroyed. So tonight as I'm getting ready to go, I give God praise for his word. And I cannot add anything or take anything away from it. But I can just say, this is what the Spirit of the Lord has said to me. And I'm sure as we go more and more into this new year and this new season, God is going to speak. He's going to speak through many other voices. And He's going to speak in many other ways. All my prayer for you tonight is, beloved, is that you will hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. I know what he's saying to you. Jesus Christ is coming again. If you're listening to me under the sound of my voice and you're not a Christian, you're not born again, I want to give you an opportunity. I want to give you a moment, praise God, to assess your spiritual equilibrium and decide where you are in God. Are you in a stabilized place in God or are you in a place of uncertainty? And if you are not sure, I want to give every one of you an opportunity right now to give your life to God. What will a man give in exchange for his soul? The word of God says that. He says, what will a man give in exchange for his soul? And then he said, no man can serve two masters. You will either love one and you will hate the other. You will cleave to one or you will despise the other. No man can serve two masters. Beloved, I want to pray for you tonight if you want to make sure that you are ready for when Jesus comes. And if you are that person that say, Prophetess, pray for me right now. Type it in your chat. Praise God. Or lift your hands up wherever you are under the sound of my voice. And if you're near your phone, just type it in. Prophetess, pray for me. Or pray for the Jones family. Pray for the Rose family. Pray for us because I want my whole family to be saved. I want my whole family to go with Jesus. If that's you tonight, quickly just put your hands up. Praise God. God bless you. Praise God. Or type it in the chat. Quickly, please, quickly. Let's do it right now. Everybody just begin to pray. Right where you are tonight, just open your mouth quietly and just begin to pray right where you are. Ruko shapra kara bande de boskata. Raba koroske raba shapra kata. Ruko shapra kata de boske de hina. Rosa pra kande de bo shapra hata. Ruko ko shapra kanda raha. Come on, somebody is going to give their life to the Lord right now. Somebody is coming back to Jesus. Somebody, praise God, is not going to be left behind. Here come the Bible said, What will a man give? In exchange for his soul, he can the most katabahanda. Rubble, it says in John chapter 3 and verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. I believe right now as you lift your voice. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on, somebody pray. I believe as we come together in faith and believe right now, somebody is going to experience the love of God. Somebody is going to experience the power of God. Somebody is going to tap into the grace of God. The grace of God. The grace of God. I don't care if you are a backslider. I don't care, praise God, if you lost your way. Praise God. Maybe last year. Maybe the year before last. The Bible said, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So tonight, I give to you salvation. I give to you the free gift. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Somebody lift your voice and pray with power. Somebody pray. Pray tonight. Hallelujah. Shakatara Bandurumush Roskarabahata Rabaha Rubo Shaprakata Labadi Ekebo Shaprahan de Rebosha Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you,
Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my So God. wherever you are, just say this word. Say, Father. Father. Forgive me of all my sins. Forgive me of all my sins. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Save me. Save me. Right now. Right now. Deliver me. Deliver me. Set me free. Set me free. From every yoke of bondage. From every yoke of bondage. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I believe in you. I believe in you. Say it with meaning. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe you died on the cross. I believe, you died I believe you rose from the dead. I believe you rose from right the dead. Right now, right now, I am saved. I am saved. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody Jesus. clap your hands and give God the loudest praise. Thank you, Jesus. So what a time! What a glorious moment! Yes, wow. And um, we thank God that we were able to share in this moment. Amen. Yes, And just to experience the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. And experience the grace of God. The exceeding goodness of his grace, his goodness of his greatness, of his goodness, of his grace, and the grace and the goodness of God that he has bestowed upon us. So we honor God tonight for his word, and I am so grateful for this moment and this time that I'm able to share with you what thus saith the Lord, what thus saith the Lord. And he says, my sheep knows my voice. Another one they will not obey. So let's not obey any other voice. Let's just hearken diligently to the voice that God has spoken tonight and that he is speaking, that he will always be speaking. And so tonight we give him glory and honor. We bless God for all of you. Thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you for crossing over with us. And thank you. As we cross over and cross over and crossing over, that you will be with us in this thing. Go to our website, manningknowledge.org. We have so many things we want to share with you. Be a part of the upcoming school of ministry, even on January the 8th. It's going to be powerful. It is a school like no other. Praise God. And then on the 22nd, as another segment is launching for the whole year, will be our school of ministry for prophetic people. Somebody say, Well, I'm not a prophet. Praise God, but if you are a part of a prophetic dispensation, so come be a part of the school of, of, of the prophets, of the apostles, uh, of deliverance, of the fivefold ministry. You fit in somewhere. you got to be something in the body of Christ. Come on. So come and be a part of our school. It's going to be powerful. And you're going to be blessed by whatever God is doing. So until next time, I love you. God bless you. Come on, give God a praise.